Hello, everyone, and welcome to this online conference on Israeli national security, brought to you by Haaretz and the Eunice and Soraya Nazarian Center for Israel Studies at the University of California, Los Angeles. I'm Dov Waxman, the director of the Nazarian Center and the Rosalind and Arthur Gilbert Foundation Chair of Israel Studies at UCLA. The mission of the UCLA Nazarian Center for Israel Studies is to promote the study of modern Israel at UCLA and beyond. To that end, the Nazarian Center sponsors courses about Israel for UCLA students, generates and disseminates academic research in the field of Israel studies, organizes frequent public programs, and hosts visiting scholars, writers, and artists. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, our public programming has moved online and we've been able to reach a worldwide audience. By partnering with Haaretz to organize this conference, we hope to reach even more people and help promote a broader and deeper understanding of Israeli national security and the strategic challenges Israel currently faces. We've identified three major strategic challenges, though there are, of course, others. The first and most immediate is the Iranian nuclear program and what's been called Israel's shadow war with Iran, a covert war that's been taking place for some time now and has become more open recently. There's a growing danger of a full-blown war between Israel and Iran, which would probably also involve the United States, as well as the growing risk that Iran will soon be able to cross the nuclear threshold and become a nuclear armed state, or at least a state with the capability to quickly build a nuclear weapon. While the danger of a nuclear armed Iran preoccupies Israeli policymakers and security officials, there is another danger that is generally receives less attention, the danger that the conflict with the Palestinians will become insoluble as the possibility of a two-state solution to the conflict disappears. Finding a way to peacefully and equitably resolve this conflict, or at least reduce it, is Israel's second strategic challenge, and it is no less pressing than Iran's nuclear program. Israel's ability to deal with both of these strategic challenges and others depends in part on its long-standing de facto alliance with the United States, Israel's closest ally. Maintaining bipartisan American support for this alliance at a time of increasing partisan political polarization in the United States is therefore another pressing strategic challenge for Israel. To discuss these three critical challenges and what Israel should do about them, we have assembled an amazing lineup of speakers, including current and former Israeli policymakers and leading experts from Israel and the United States. We will hear from Benny Gantz and Robert Menendez, from Yossi Cohen, Zippy Livni, and Murad Michaeli, and we'll have three panel discussions. I hope you will find these speeches, interviews, and panels to be interesting, informative, and thought-provoking. I'm sure I will. I'm delighted that the UCLA Nazarian Center for Israel Studies has been able to partner with Haaretz to bring you this conference. I'd like to thank the team at Haaretz, especially Aluf Ben, Amir Tivon, Omer Schubert, and Nufa Chen, and my team at the Nazarian Center, particularly Maura Resnick and Jane Matusovskaya, for all their hard work in organizing this conference. I'd also like to thank our donors for funding this conference and all the speakers for generously giving their time and sharing their expertise and insights. And now I will turn over to Aluf Ben, Haaretz's Editor-in-Chief. Thank you, Doe. I'm happy to open the first conference on Israel's national security. And I want to thank our partners from the UCLA Yunus and Soraya Nazarian Center for Israel Studies for making this happen, along with my colleagues at Haaretz. Our conference takes place when new governments are leading both the United States and Israel. The Biden administration and the Bennett government are struggling with similar challenges, shaky public support, and the overbearing shadow of the populist predecessors, Trump and Netanyahu. And both Bennett and Biden are trying to shape new responses to old challenges, or at least to show new diplomatic styles. We're approaching November 29th, that is the anniversary of the UN partition plan in Palestine and the Palestine Day at the United Nations, and now also the planned day for resumption of talks with Iran on the nuclear deal with the superpowers. Are we facing the crossing of nuclear threshold in Iran? 
or have we, as former Prime Minister Ehud Barak had stated, already approached it? What does it mean to Israel's national security? Is there still anything to talk about with the Iranians? Are we facing a bombing or bomb dilemma for Israel? And what would be the boundaries of a possible Israeli policy with or without American support? The current regional and global focus on Iran's nuclear development and power projection is the key Middle Eastern issues. The divider of nations and alliances overshadows the Palestinian issue. Prime Minister Bennett indicated that he has no interest in pursuing a deal or even talks with the Palestinian Authority leadership. And presiding over this unprecedented right-left coalition that for the first time includes an Arab party, Bennett plays a very delicate balancing act. Uh, while passing the budget uh, is giving him some breathing space and time uh, to maneuver. Bennett has tried to please both political ends, the left by allowing small, mostly economic gestures to the Palestinian Authority and allowing some minister to meet President Abbas, and the right, his former support base, by approving new settlement construction, declaring civil society organizations in the PA as terrorist groups, and uh, objecting the reopening of the U.S. consulate in Jerusalem, closed by Trump, uh, which served as a thinly veiled embassy to the Palestinians in the past. Can Bennett proceed and go on with this tightrope dance, giving little while expecting the relative quiet security situation vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Palestinians to prevail? Or would the inevitable dilemmas, conflicts, and hard decisions on Gaza, on the future of the Palestinian Authority after Abbas, on Israel's settlement expansion, are merely delayed and will return in the third act, if not the second act? The consulate disagreement notwithstanding, the Biden administration has shown strong support for Israel's new government. Biden avoided Netanyahu after he took office, and, uh, it was, but he was happy to host Bennett at the White House and enjoy a, a joint photo with Bennett in Glasgow at the climate conference, where they both attended. Obvious ideological gaps exist between the former CEO of the Yesha Council, the settler lobby group, and the current leader of the American left wing. But are they merely swept under the rug in order to keep Netanyahu away from office? Or will they implode in some way and harm the relationship, as we see in the disagreement over the consulate, over the proposed agreement with Iran, and other issues? Could Biden, with his perceived weakness, both domestically and internationally, and his foreign policy focus on the de facto Cold War with China, would he have the energy or political interest to push America again into the Israeli-Palestinian arena? Or would, Bennett, Biden, or would Biden suffice with Bennett avoiding any game changers and simply keeping the issue away from the American radar for as long as deep as possible? Netanyahu sided firmly with the Republicans, and particularly President Trump, imitating his style. But his opponents failed and successors. Uh, Netanyahu sided firmly with the Republicans, and particularly with President Trump, imitating his style, but Netanyahu's opponents and uh, successors so far have failed to build similar rapport with the Democratic Party, where a vocal left wing strongly opposes the current U.S. support, and particularly its military aid to Israel. Is Israel at risk of losing an even bigger chunk of its American support base, or can it bring back some bipartisanship into the relations? Iran and the Palestinians, the future of the American alliance with Israel are the key issues driving Israel's policy and national security agenda, and obviously will be the focus of our conference today. And I wish all of us a fruitful, challenging, and hopefully surprising day. Thank you. I'm delighted to address you in this forum. As a young soldier, my first ever operational mission was guarding Egyptian President Sadat's convoy during his first historic visit to Israel. Today, I'm serving as Israel's Minister of Defense during a time when we have peace with Egypt and Jordan and a groundbreaking normalization agreement with the UAE, Bahrain, and Morocco. This is time when I'm more hopeful than ever that we can multiply the success of these accords. These agreements 
are critical so that the region may flourish and so that we may stand strong against common threats. These threats are all originated and coordinated by Iran, which is a global and regional challenge, as well as a challenge to the state of Israel. Iran sees itself as a hegemon, systematically equipping terror armies and exporting its radical ideology, weapons, funds, and manpower across the Middle East. They target economic resources, as we saw in the Aramco attack case, disrupt global trade, as we saw in the Mercer Street attack case, harm democratic processes, as we see in the Iraqi elections, and dismantle regime, as we see in, the, in Lebanon and in Syria. Everything that Iran is doing now is taking place without nuclear canopy. Imagine what will happen if Iran reaches a nuclear threshold. I can support an agreement that will be broader, stronger, and longer, taking Iran back, dismantling its current capabilities, and placing effective inspections on its sites and on its weapons production. Iran possess a serious threat to global peace and potential existential threat to Israel. We will continue to act, ensuring that Iran will never achieve military nuclear capabilities. <coughs> This conference is not only dealing with the challenges, but also remarks the opportunities that we have in the region. One of them is strengthening the ties between Israel and its neighbors. When I met Palestinian Authority Chairman Abu Mazen, I told him that regardless of our differences, nobody on either side is going anywhere and we will have to live side by side. As I see it, we have an opportunity to build trust between Israel and the Palestinians, taking measures on the ground that will contribute to security, stability, and economic, and economic prosperity, steps that will benefit both sides. At a time of both great optimism and increasing threats in the region, the international community, led by the United States, EU, and partners in the Middle East, should invest in their goodwill and resources in improving Palestinian life and economy. This will contribute to peace and stability and enable us to continue building the foundation for our common future. Having discussed our challenges and opportunities, we must remember that Israel's ability to both defend itself and to seek peace lies in the resilience of our society. The Israeli government is committed to this issue. Israel's social resilience, partnership with the international friends on, and the strong bonds with the Jewish communities around the world will guarantee our future in this complex region. Thank you. All.